Hello, MC here, host of the Physics MC YouTube channel. And today we're going to be talking about some circuit stuff. Basically, Kirchhoff's rules for circuits. Um, that's in proper grammar, with the explanation point, but really saying Kirchhoff's rules. No. Basically, there's this guy named Kirchhoff that came up with two rules for circuits, and we'll talk about those two rules in detail and how they apply. So, let's get started, shall we? Awesome. Anyway, so first let's start by drawing a circuit and start labeling some of those pieces. So let's start with drawing a battery. So this reminds me of a little uh, joke. Um, there was a Energizer bunny that was recently charged with battery. All right. Anyway, now the battery supplies voltages to a circuit. Um, now, what a voltage does is it uh, will push the electrons or the charges in a certain direction. Here I'm drawing a resistor, so basically the uh, current will flow uh, from the battery through the resistor if it's a complete circuit. Um, but that is basically uh, the application. Here's a resistor. Um, I'm maybe drawing a resistor here, and then we want to connect it back to the battery. Now this is just a basic series circuit. Um, no need for Kirchhoff's rules here. We can just use combination series. Um, or, uh, or, or sometimes you have parallel circuits as well, but uh, uh, for example something like this would use a, a parallel and series com combination circuit to solve for those. Um, but really what uh, Kirchhoff's rules would not apply in to this case. The only time Kirchhoff's rules would apply would be if you have more than one uh, battery source. So here we have another battery. So now Kirchhoff's rules would apply because basically you have two different uh, voltage sources. So think about what each battery is going to do. So this battery right here has a negative end which is denoted by the bottom part and a positive end which is denoted by the bigger part. You can think positive is plus sized, it's bigger, and negative end looks like a little minus sign. So uh, there we have it. I'll get rid of that arrow. So that's the battery. We'll focus on that battery. And what that battery is going to do, uh, it's going to push conventional current, which is positive current, uh, this direction. So it's going to push it along that way. So that's what the battery is going to want to do. And likewise, the battery over here is going to push current this direction. Okay, pretty neat. So now focusing back on the first battery, the current for the first battery is going to want to go um, to the right. But what's going to end up happening is it's going to run into this current um, that's also go going to the left. So that's not going to be the case. Um, so yes, yeah, some of the current will end up going to the right, but uh, another path it could take is go downwards. Same with this current right here on the right. It will also want to tend to go downwards. And then it'll loop back around go here, loop back around, and go here. One thing you can always remember is that, uh, I'll just show it one arrow for the current there, but the currents will uh, uh, always go from the positive end of the battery to the negative end of the battery. So always go from positive end to the negative end. All right. So both of these batteries do that. And uh, they have to go through some resistors along the way. Okay, so Kirchhoff's rules, let's uh, talk about them. So Kirchhoff said, hey, with multiple battery sources, uh, there's going to be some rules that these currents are going to follow. So rule number one is that the current that goes into a junction, we'll define what a junction is uh, in a second. Um, sorry for my bad handwriting. I'm writing this with my finger, but uh, current goes into a junction will end up equaling the current leaving that junction. So that kind of makes sense. So if you imagine if you have a bunch of cars uh, on a highway and they come to an intersection. So uh, we've been current. Uh, if they come to an intersection, uh, then the cars that enter the intersection will end up uh, going into the intersection and then they'll leave the intersection. So think of it like these are cars going that way, cars going that way, 
and those two cars will meet up, and the cars that enter that in intersection will leave that intersection. Okay? So that means that the current's always flowing. That's kind of neat. So current into the junction equals current leaving junction. That's his first rule. So we'll elaborate on that in a little bit. Um, Kirchhoff's second rule is that all the voltages in a loop, voltages in a loop, add to zero. Or you could say they basically cancel out. So another way to think of that, um, I'll do that in purple, is that this battery right here it has a certain amount of voltage. Let's say it has 15 volts. Okay, so 15 volts. So it has a certain amount of voltage. That voltage is going to get used up by this resistor. Some of it's going to get used up by this resistor. And then it's going to go back to this battery. And it's going to use up all the voltage. Likewise with this battery. This resistor is going to use up some of that energy uh, per charge. And then it'll end up at the battery. So all the voltage will be used up by all those batteries. So this is getting kind of uh, messy right now. So I'm going to uh, erase some of it. So uh, let's back up a little bit and uh, let's kind of talk about an example. So let's do, uh, let's just delete all this. Let's see. So let's go through a detailed example here. So remember the current going to a junction uh, will end up leaving that junction. And the second rule is that voltages in a loop um, will add to zero. Basically, they'll cancel out. So currents and voltages will basically cancel out. That's what it comes down to. Really, you think of it as conservation of energy. Energy is conserved. So let's talk about this. So let's give some values to some of these. So this is, we'll call that 15 volts. And we'll call this 10 volts. We'll call this resistor 10 ohms and 5 ohms. Alright, so before we start, we need to find what a junction is and what the currents are. So this current right here, we'll define that as current number 1, I being current. Alright, so if you think about that current, it's going to go around go through this resistor, it'll change, but then it'll come back there. So this current will also be I1. Because really think about the current leaving the battery, this battery, um, will be the current entering the battery. So both the current going leaving the battery and the current entering the battery will be I1. Well likewise, let's, uh, let's do the other battery, so we'll call that I2. I2 is the current leaving the battery, and then I2 is also the current entering the battery. So we have one red arrow that's not marked. That red arrow would be the middle arrow. Um, so we'll call that I3. It's the only unmarked arrow. Okay, cool. So let's define a junction. A junction is any intersection in the circuit. Basically, where multiple wires come together at a point. So I see two junctions in this circuit. One junction is right here. Basically there's an intersection of three wires coming to a point there. The second junction is right there. Um, you notice that there's three wires touching each of those. One wire, two wire, three wires, and one wire, two wire, three wires. They all come together at those two points. So I erase those lines so it's not quite as distracting. Um, but really we're looking at those two junctions. So uh, we'll call it J1 and J2. Okay, so J1. Let's think about the currents going into that junction. So really we're looking for the red arrows pointing into that J1. Well, we have I1 going into that junction, and we also have I2 going into that junction. But we have an arrow pointing away from that junction, it's I3. So if it's going away from the junction, it's leaving the junction. So the current going in, I1 plus I2, equals the current going out, which is I3. 
That's really what Kirchhoff's first rule says, is that the currents going in, these, equal the currents going out, which is that. So if you add current 1 plus, plus current 2, I2, it'll equal the current for current 3. Alright, cool. Let's do the same thing for J2. So looking at J2, what arrow are, is going into J2? Well, we have I3. I3 is pointing right down towards J2. That's the only arrow going into J2. So that's the current going in. What arrows are leaving? Well, we have I1. And we also have I2. Are leaving. Well, if you look at these two equations, this one and this one, they're exactly the same equation. You have I1 plus I2 equals I3, and the other one you have I1 plus I2 equals I3. It just flipped around. So really, we don't need two equations to say the same thing. We can just go with one. Alright, that's pretty neat. So we're already, like, most of the way done with Kirchhoff's rules. We already have step one done with uh, figuring out the junction rule. Alright, let's apply a second rule. Second rule says that, hey, every loop, the voltage is at zero. So let's uh, color code this. Let's make the loops blue. So what we could do is we could look at the smallest loop in the circuit. I see a loop here. And I also see a loop here. Alright. So we'll call that loop A and loop B. I know this is kind of getting crowded with writing, but hopefully the color code will help you out. So let's look at loop A. We said the uh, voltages will add to zero. So let's start right with the battery. And we'll add up all the voltages across loop A and then uh, hopefully they add to zero. So loop A. We have 15 volt battery. So 15 volts. And now going from the battery, going around this direction, we go through a resistor. And what's going to happen when you're going through the current is the voltage is going to drop. So, right here, this uses up some voltage. How much voltage does it use? Well, it uses V equals IR. The famous equation, V equals IR. Well, that's a voltage as well. What's the R? Well, I don't know. Well, yes we do. We do know it's 5 ohms. What's I? Well, I is I1. So, we're going to subtract off IR. So I1 times 5, or we can rewrite that as 5I1. Okay, so going around the circuit, we're going down this path, and that's going to run into this resistor right here. So that's going to equal, well, it's going with the current, so you're going to subtract it off, and that resistance is 10, so we have minus 10 times the current of I3. 3. And then we wrap back around and go to the battery and we're back where we started. So that's a closed loop. So that equals 0. So that's what it says, is that the voltages across every closed loop equals 0. Well, we also have a second closed loop here. The one on the right. So we have B. So let you try this one on your own. So B, we can start with the battery. The battery is 10 volts. And we start with the battery, go around, and we don't run into any resistor until we get to this. 10 volts. Oh, we ran into a resistor. And we're going with the current, so we subtract it off. Now, if we went against the current, let's say the arrow was going the other way, its red arrow right here was pointing up then we would add the current, we would go to plus 10. But since we're going with the current, we can subtract it off um, and make it minus 10. So minus 10, um, but that's 10 ohms, it's 10 I3 equals 0, because we don't have any more resistors to go through. And there we have it. We have three equations. Uh, I'll, I'll put those in a uh, Let's see, so three equations. Outline those in yellow. So here's equation number one. It says that I1 plus I2 equals I3. Here's equation uh, number two. It says that uh, I1 
minus, uh, sorry, so it's 15 minus 5i1 minus 10i3 equals 0. And then equation number 3 says, hey, 10 minus 10i3 equals 0. So from there, we have three equations and three unknowns, and you can solve for any of the i1, i2, i3 using some algebra skills, which I won't dive into in this um, video, but uh, if you know what, it's just looking at this one, we can intuitively think that, hey, if 10 minus 10 i3 equals 0, then i3 must equal 1 amp. And once you solve for one of the i's, then you can just plug it into other equations and solve for what the other currents are. So I hope this video was helpful. If you still have any questions, um, you can leave them in the com comments, and then uh, I'll get back to you. All right. Have a great day.